Day two here at the Invictus Games is it's track and field in the morning and I've got Sean Gaffney with me. Sean, you've finished all your events now and you're medalled up to the match. <laughs> Not, your not, all the med not all the medals, but enough to make me very, very happy. Just um, run through what you've done and what you've won uh, Yesterday, on. early start yesterday, was men's heavyweight powerlifting. Went exceptionally well. Managed to get the gold in that. So, quick break, nip to the loo, bite to eat, and then straight into the four and then one minute indoor rowing events on the ergo, the ergo meters. And you've had a shot but a discus this morning, and I've just seen you run the 400 meters. You're just getting your breath back. Yeah, I am. I've only finished a minute or so ago. Um, yeah, yesterday were my main events, they were the ones I was hoping to do well in. The shot put and discus, I've only started doing that end of February, beginning of March, so I'm still relatively new. Unfortunately, I didn't medal, I came behind a very, very good English athlete, Gus. Uh, so he's out swimming in the lake to celebrate. Um, he's been doing it for quite a lot longer than me, so the fact that I could, I was nipping at his heels was a great encouragement to me. So. I can go away now, a bit more practice, hopefully put my name down for Toronto next year and uh, show the Royal Marines that the Navy's still got it. I think you are a man who epitomises the Invictus Games. You've just thrown yourself in there, you've won medals, but you want to take part in everything, you want to be part of everything. What's the worst that's going to happen? The only thing I wanted to, out of the 400 was not to be last and do a PB. I, I managed to grab defeat from the jaws of victory, missed out on the bronze, but I've got my PB and I didn't come last. And even if I had come last by a country mile, this crowd here, all the English team, everybody, the support would have been amazing. They would have waited for the last person and clapped them in as enthusiastically as they clapped the first person in. And that's what this is about. And on that note, now you've finished all your events, you'll be fully behind all the team events that are coming out later in the week. Well, we've been given wonderful passes by Disney to go to all the resorts. I'm not going to any of the resorts. I'm staying here for the next two days to get behind my marvellous teammates. Disney will be here next year. I'll come back on holiday. This is once in a lifetime. Sean, you're a superstar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Begin. Team UK couldn't have really wished for a better opening day to the 2016 Invictus Games. The first medal of the Games went to Sarah Claricote. A bronze in the female lightweight powerlifting squad got Team UK off the mark. And the field house was to be the scene of more triumph for the UK team. A silver for Neris Pierce in the heavyweight category. Then the men took centre stage. Paralympian Mickey Yule dominated the lightweight category, lifting a personal best of 190 kilograms to take gold and defend his title from 2014. Team UK dominated the heavyweights as well with a British 1 2 3. Sean Gaffney lifted an impressive 171 kilograms to take gold. Team UK's dominance wasn't confined to the field house. Incredibly, the road cycling saw another 1 2 3. Rob Cromie Hawk leading home Paul Weiss and Michael Smurf Matthews. Feels amazing, yes. And actually, with the time trial, is when we did get the 1 2 3 this time. Uh, and it's one that you can't really control, it's an individual effort. But actually, that teamwork really came through in the build up to get in here. We really pushed each other and we had it in the back of our own minds as we were going around there of wondering where the next person behind you or in front of you was and what time they would post, which was the driver, I think, for all of us to, to just keep pushing. This performance set the tone with the UK ending the morning with an incredible 24 medals on the bike. The afternoon and evening saw a chance for the UK team's day to get even better in the rowing. There were 17 medals in all, including four golds. An impressive opening day then for Team UK out here in Orlando, something that this morning's track and field competitors will hope to build on. Now that incredible medal haul on day one all started inside the field house with the powerlifting. Sarah Claricotes getting the first UK medal, a bronze in the women's lightweight. Five more would follow. One of those was Ross Austin. The former Royal Engineer only took up the sport 18 months ago, but he's progressed so quickly that he's now part of the GB setup. And he has his sights set on bigger things. But first, he wanted to win a medal here in Orlando at the Invictus Games. I went to see if he could do it. When it comes to powerlifting, you really are under the spotlight. Ah! Thank you. 
Ross, though, reckons his time in the military prepared him well. I think it helps as well being in the military, have that mentality. So, you know, to be a, a, an elite athlete at that level, it's, you know, it's not easy. There's a lot of commitment, a lot of um, sacrifices. You know, you're away from your family quite, quite a lot. I'm, I'm away most weeks. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, not a, an easy life, but, you know, there's a lot of dedication as well with your diet, especially in powerlifting because it's weight categories. You have to be on point with your diet. Um, but I love it. You know, I love being in that environment and with people like Mickey here as well, who's obviously qualified for Rio. And I see him every day pretty much. It just spurs me on. Mickey, as in Mickey Yule, also a former Royal Engineer, he'll be travelling to Brazil for this summer's Paralympics. Rio is too soon for Ross, but this is a man with targets. It gets you up every morning to, I've always, if you, if you don't set targets or have a goal, you know, what's the point doing anything? So, you know, we set ourselves targets. I say I set my target beginning of last year to make the squad and I reached that, um, you know, fairly quick. Um, so, yeah, I'm just each time just set smaller targets. And I say I've got a four-year planning process and fingers crossed. I'll be there at the end of it. Ross lost his left leg above the knee when he was injured by an IED in November 2008 in Afghanistan. He then spent three years at Headley Court. A difficult time for any family, and although his wife and kids couldn't make the trip to Florida this time, he's ably supported by his parents. 100% they need focus. Needs to get up for something every day and... I mean, I think the first few years after he was injured, that's what he didn't have. And in the last two years, 18 months, yeah, I, I, that's it, changed him completely. It is by, by their nature, all the lads that are, you know, and, and lasses, they've all got that drive. And once you sort of take that away and, and, and give them injuries, that makes it feel like they get nothing back, you know. And then to find something that you can actually do and excel. Uh, and he, he does and he has, you know, and, and to have those goals has made, it, it's just a massive, massive difference. And you can see here at the spirit of the, the games how people are, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Karen and Ashley still going through all of the emotions, now as parents of an elite athlete. Silver medal, representing the United Kingdom, Ross Austin. Ross coming away with a silver medal in a British 1-2-3 podium. I worked hard for the last three, four months. Um, I knew I had it in me, which is a case of performing on a day under the pressure of the crowd. And, yeah, it was great. How special was it then to have a 1-2-3 on the podium? Oh, it's great. Um, you know, obviously with um, the prelims and that, we, we tried hard to get at least an, one athlete in all of, you know, and we've medalled in all the categories, in the women as well, light women, heavy women, light men, heavy men, and to get, to finish off the last heavy men uh, event and get a one, two, three on the pony is great. Uh. Onwards and upwards then for this Invictus medal winner, another example of when using sport and recovery leads to sporting success. Now, as we saw there, Ross has only been in his sport for 18 months and already doing so well. Some of the athletes competing here have been in their sport for a much, much shorter period of time. Ulfat is a chemist in the Jordanian army. Injured in a car crash in 2011, she was left with incomplete paralysis of all four limbs. Until yesterday, she'd never even sat in a racing wheelchair. Now she's given herself just 48 hours to learn how to use one before taking her place on the start line alongside some of the best military para-athletes in the world. Well, the most difficult things really are just the position. You have to you know, basically in a, be in a trunk forward position where you're leaning way forward, your feet are tucked underneath you, and you have to learn how to push on these push rims um, to make the chair go forward. Do you think you're going this way or do you think you're going this way? Which way is the bike veering? This way, right? So I think we want to come more to... Add to all that the small issue of a language barrier and many wouldn't even consider taking on a race. Okay, go ahead. But this is the Invictus Games and anything is possible. Yeah, let's see what happens. Keeping the bicycle straight, that's the hardest thing. Um, there's dips in the track, so if you're on the outside lane, it's a little, a little larger slope towards the inside where it flattens out. So when you push... Push, let go. So getting her to, if she's stronger on her left, use more right hand, that's that's the most difficult part, is, is, is the steering of the actual wheelchair. 
So it's important that you do stay in the lanes when you're racing? Oh, you'll be disqualified. Yeah, you have to stay in the lanes. There you go, 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 push, push. Perfect, go, go, go. Perfect. I love doing this. This is the best part of my job. I love what I do. Keep I going. enjoy working go. with athletes. Perfect. I love being outside. And the first day she didn't have a smile. Now that she knows to do it, she's smiling, you know, beautifully. So it's, it's, it's great to see that. Also out on the track is Ulfat's teammate Hamza. And Hamza has set himself an even bigger challenge. Okay, now turn. There, no. Hit the turn button. <laughs> I'm teaching one of them how to go around the curves because he's doing the 200 meter, which you can see by the track, there's a curve and he has to go around the curve and then go straight. The faster you go, the more it turns. So when you go slow, it doesn't turn. So you have to be going, you have to be going. <laughs> go, 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 like a race. Okay, go, go. Let's just practice turning. See how it turns now? The faster you go, the more it turns. Beautiful. On the other side of the track, a member of the Australian team has come over so to offer Ulfat some help. And, you push, and if, you're, if you're going too far this way, then you'll flick that or this, yeah? Just a little. As, as you come down, you flick, right? Yes. So that will turn the wheel a little bit. Okay, so if, if you... It, if it turns to right, I will... Yes. 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 To left? So, okay. yep. Yes. So as you come along, if you're starting to turn, then you can come along and just flick it a little, only a little, little bit. Because if you go like that, that will make you come right around, okay? That's too far. To add a little more pressure to the athletes, His Royal Highness the Prince of Jordan stopped by the track to see how his team were getting on, even challenging Hamza to a race. Go! Hamza! Hamza! They're doing terrific. We're so happy to be part of the Invictus Games for the first time. This is a great honor and we're very grateful to His Royal Highness Prince Harry and the whole Invictus team for allowing Jordan to take part. And We're very excited and we hope to carry on and take part in the future games as well. Are you here cheering them on throughout the games? Uh, yes, yes, I'll be here the whole week and I hope we'll have some good results. So, Thank you. You're, you're, you're confident? Uh, I, I'm, I'm optimistically uh, say cautious. I, I, I think we're going to get some good results. I hope so. I hope so. But of course, it's the, the, the taking part which is the most important thing. And, and um, already, I see big smiles on our, on our, uh, our soldiers, and uh, that's what's really important. Uh. How do you feel about racing? Are you, are you ready? Confident? Uh, I'm ready. I'm enthusiastic. I'm looking forward to it. And God's will, I will finish the race and get something for Jordan. Race day came, and Hamza powered through his 100 metres, claiming an incredible fourth place for Jordan. Then it was Ulfat's turn. A few adjustments needed, but she stayed in her lane. And as the winners crossed the line, the crowd's attention turned to the young Jordanian on the track. With the spectators chanting her country's name, Ulfat crossed the line with the stadium and the forces world behind her. That's all from us here in Orlando for today. Later on, we've got the semi-finals and finals of the sitting volleyball. The UK team expecting big things there. You can catch all the action from that tomorrow on Forces TV. But remember to keep updated on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for all the latest from here in Orlando. See you then.